Hello everyone, welcome to Curiosity, the monthly roundup of science related stories. Right, so this one is for the month of October 2024. October, as usual, we will start with the etymology of the month's name. October comes from Octo, which is Latin, means, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, eighth. 8, right? So, it used to be 8th month. Right now, it's 10th month though, right? It used to be 8th month when the year was just 10 months long during the Roman period. You know, the Roman calendar system. The calendar of Romulus, right? Uh, in the BC, right? So, yeah, that's why it is a. So, by the way, why Octo? So, in the September or so, we, we said this one, right? Octo is, you can trace the root of Latin all the way to Sanskrit. Ashta. Right? So, that is where, why Octo comes from. That's very interesting, isn't it? That's fascinating, curiosity driven. Yeah, etymology is, you know, infinitely curiosity driven topic. Yeah. This is the month of calendula as per florigraphy. Uh, calendula is a small flower, marigold, isn't it? Daisy family. Marigold is also belongs to calendula, right? And October is, uh, uh, you know, Nobel Prize month. So, within next one or two weeks, the Nobel Prize will be announced that will be featuring the next episode, right, for the November. And also, this is uh, the month of uh, various asteroid, uh, you know, so you can, you can watch a lot of asteroids in this month, right, meteor showers. And uh, also, super moon, right, the, the full moon of this month is super moon. I will come to it in a, a short while. First, we will see what happened in the world of science latest. So, in the last month, we saw that Ig Nobel Prizes were announced. So, Ig Nobel Prizes are pretty interesting. You know, it's all a curiosity driven. So, 2024 winners. Uh, Ig Nobel Prize is basically coming from Harvard University. And many uh, winners of this prize have won the real Nobel Prize too. Okay, that is why it's very interesting. And the criterion for award of this Ig Nobel Prize is that uh, the inventions or discoveries of the papers or the papers will let you laugh at first, right? But then let you make you think, right? That's pretty interesting. Okay, the first paper is about uh, blue zones, uh, extreme longevity. Some parts of the world have this extreme longevity. People easily live uh, more than 110 years, you know? Super centenarians, isn't it? One such a place is called Okinawa Island in Japan and also Sardinia, right? So this study is that it's just because this uh, blue zones exist just because of the poor record keeping. Can you believe it? So, Okinawa, for example, is one of the poorest village in Japan for a long, long time, you know, and the, the vegetable consumption is also pretty low. And it's pretty interesting why the people live really that long. Is it really an uh, uh, artifact of the poor record keeping? Yes, that is what the new studies say. Next story is about probability. If you flip a coin, of course, there's a 50-50 percentage chance that it will land on either side, isn't it? Head or tail. But now this very interesting story with a large sample set, more than 35,000 flips. Yeah. Uh, what it says that the studies say that if you flip a coin, so it tends to land on the same side as it flipped. That means if you start from head, there is a slightly uh, 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 more probability that it will land on the head itself. That's pretty interesting. Now, next story, uh, the ignoble winner is that many mammals have ability to, uh, you know, breathe through rectum, anus. You know, can you breathe through anus? That's pretty interesting. And, uh, the you know, this paper uh, paves way for, uh, you know, respiratory failure. The people with respiratory failure, you can uh, uh, push, you know, the liquid oxygen, basically, uh, you know, uh, yeah, so it's basically the uh, oxygen mixed with some chemical. You can push it through the rectum so that the muscles can absorb the oxygen through the rectum. That's very interesting. Well, the, the study was in a pig and a rat and mouse, but still it, it gives promise on men as well, right? It's pretty interesting. Uh, it makes you laugh at first, is it? Uh, breathing through anus, how is it possible, isn't it? But yeah, it's possible. Next is about the placebo. You know, placebos are basically, you know, uh, yeah, placebo effect is a psychological effect, isn't it? It's not real medicine, but it's sweet pills that the doctors give uh, to, con you know, to counter the hyper hypochondriacals. They always believe that, I mean, I have some pain, for example, back pain. And if doctor prescribes some vitamin, 
but the doctor do not reveal that it's a vitamin capsule or a, just a sugar pill and but the doctor say well this is a very next generation very new a uh, treatment for it's a it's a painkiller then chance are high that you will feel good about it right that is called the placebo effect okay so now certain placebos are better than normal placebo what are these placebos so this new paper say placebo that induce some side effect like diarrhea or you know some kind like stomach ache you know so mild uh, uh you know mild side effect inducing placebos are regarded as or perceived as more powerful and it can induce more powerful placebo effect pretty interesting right it's funny so related uh, discovery also got uh ig nobel prize in 2008 well it's a very long story of ig nobel right 2008 winner for physiology or medicine uh, did uh, you know expensive placebo some placebos can be expensive than other kinds of placebo right the cheaper so if you compare with the cheaper placebo the expensive placebos are perceived as more effective by the public you know pretty interesting and that explains why alternative medicines are pretty expensive right because that they make use of the placebo effect and to make it more potent it's more expensive very interesting yes now another uh, story is that some real plants can imitate the shapes of artificial plastic plants nearby botanical uh, observation won ig nobel prize pretty interesting isn't the plastic plant the leaf shape can be mimicked and uh, another pretty interesting the final story which i want to feature in uh, this uh, month's episode of curiosity is uh, the whorl pattern the swirl patterns of the uh, you know hair on our head right if you see if you touch back and see the swirl right how uh, the hair is being sold right so usually most of us have a clockwise rotation well you know though the 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 counterclockwise is a rarity but still there are a lot of people having counterclockwise so the authors of this particular study want to see that is a counterclockwise more prevalent in southern hemisphere you know i was thinking about butterfly effect you know some certain uh, forces can it induce you know the the counterclockwise rotation in the southern hemisphere yeah in physics there is a very famous principle called coriolis force you know so yeah that upper and lower atmosphere the circulation is counter because of the earth's rotation you know so in the southern hemisphere it is counterclockwise anti clockwise so similarly the researchers want to see that this swirl of the head right the hair uh, swirls are counterclockwise in southern hemisphere or not yeah they found us counterclockwise uh, swirl is more prevalent in south than northern hemisphere pretty interesting you know that is uh, that's all about the ig nobel prizes next is a pretty exciting news about uh, a new flu vaccine annual flu vaccine approved by fda of the united states by astrazeneca company right uh, the firm astrazeneca's new flu vaccine is nasal you know nasal drops as a, a flu vaccine so it's at home you don't really have to go to the clinic to get this annual flu shot i'm really excited i hope the generic versions will hit here in india and other countries as well very soon i always take the flu vaccines every every year you know so that is basically something called influ vac uh, tetravalent vaccine that is what i take so that that works you know yeah so and when I read this story, I was thinking about variolation, the ancient Chinese way of um, vaccine. So it is a precursor to the modern vaccination, isn't it? Variolation. That is basically uh, the smallpox, those people who had the smallpox, the skin fragment, they uh, put that into the healthy people and they ask them to snort, you know, to, to inhale these particles. So, well, some people get the the disease but the, it's basically a milder variations of the smallpox so that gives uh, the confer the immune uh, you know uh, the uh, the confer the resistance for the disease for lifelong so yeah variolation is quite related to the variolation right it's like snorting you're applying the flu vaccine in your uh, nose very interesting now the next story is about the sun well sun is our star isn't it the only star in the solar system and it's super giant can we make use of the sun's uh, gravitational force well that is the reason why the earth is uh, rotating right revolving around the sun for 365 days it takes 
So can we make use of this massive gravitational force to make a telescope? Can you believe it? Yes, it's possible in theory, yes. So hopefully in the near future, we can make this kind of a gravitational telescope. You know, so that is something called gravitational lensing. So I learned about this phenomenon, the gravitational lensing. And yeah, so in, in, in proof it is possible, you know. So that is that's pretty exciting avenue for the, the newer telescopes of uh, days to come, you know, years to come. Yeah, that's very interesting. Next is that, well, Earth once had Saturn-like ring. You know, that is pretty exciting. So, this new paper argues around 466 million years back during Ordovician time, we had this ring around our planet. And that is the reason why Earth was much more cooler, especially around the tropics, you know, near the equator. Uh, you know, the Earth was really cool during the Ordovician time. So, and that also led to dramatic increase in asteroid impacts around the tropics, all around the world, during this 466 million years back. If you look at the, the rock fragments, you can see the evidences of a huge impact as well as a very low, you know, temperature. That is pretty interesting. Next story, feeding cattle with garlic can substantially reduce up to 23% of the methane. You see the enteric methane release is a, a, a major factor for the global uh, climate change you know the global the greenhouse gas effect isn't it methane is almost 80 times more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide but not many people are discussing about the effect of the methane so how to curtail the methane so most of the methane in the atmosphere comes from cattle you know cattle blurb you know and it releases the uh, the yeah, through rectum or through the mouth right both the ways it can release the methane so if you can uh, you know reduce the methane output or production of the methane in the gut of the uh, ruminants the gut has methanogenic bacteria isn't it prokaryotes so yeah so then it can curtail the methane in the atmosphere too right so yeah earlier we used to speak about the red algae something called asparagopsis you know, so this algae, if you mix with the cattle diet, it can reduce. Yeah, there are a lot of interesting papers, especially those coming from Australia argued it. Now, well, the new papers say you don't really have to go for asparagopsis. You can simply feed them with, um, you know, garlic. And garlic also in, um, makes the cow healthier. So that's pretty interesting new paper. Well, next is about the new moon that Earth is going to have. Well, that is mostly, it's, it's like a clickbait story, you know. You can, uh, well, I read that in almost every single paper, newspaper or uh, all the blogs and whatnot, right, that uh, is celebrating that we are going to have a new mini moon. Well, the, the fact is that the moon, this, this particular object is called 2024 PT5. It's just 10 meters across. You know, the diameter is just 10 meters, just a tiny speck, right? You cannot call it as a moon or even a mini moon, right? For the same reason that the Pluto is no longer a planet, isn't it? So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very insignificant. It doesn't even revolve around the Earth. It doesn't even complete one uh, round around the Earth. It's just a hyperbolic path, okay? So, yeah, and it's not new to. It happened in 2022. Right, so yeah, and it also happened 1981. So this keep on happening. This kind of phenomena keep on happening. Okay, so this particular mini moon is or uh, or thought to be originated from Arjuna asteroid belt. Right, very interesting. Right, Ar uh, the asteroid belt has a name called Arjuna, and it's gonna come back again in uh, uh, early on in the next year, January 2025. We can expect the same, uh, uh, you know, same speck, you know, same rock to revisit us. But anyway, just a, a hyperbolic, like a, a flyby, okay? It, it's not a revolving, but just a flyby. And uh, coming to the moon, the real moon, our moon might have uh, active volcanoes. That is a new paper. Uh, the paper is uh, coming from um, China's Chang'e 5 mission, right? So, yeah, the... Uh, 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 the scientists behind Chang'e 5 mission have gathered the evidences that substantiate that the, the moon has active volcanoes. That is pretty interesting, isn't it? Now, then, the most interesting story of uh, 
this month's curiosity is about diabetes right type 1 diabetes reversed with stem cells amazing reversed completely reversed by the stem cell so how does it work so you program this stem cell totipotent stem cell right so yeah you you program it in such a way that the stem cell mimics the islets of Langerhans cells of the pancreas and it start producing the insulin very interesting please check out the show notes all these stories i linked up into the original sources of the papers okay so this paper is coming from nature right and also you can see that in in the picture right the the uh, the cover image of this month's curiosity you can see that the the blue one the blue color is all the insulin that is produced from the stem cell the red one is a stem cell pretty exciting yeah uh, yeah so next is about the defibrillators you might know about aeds right or uh, automated electronic defibrillator like in, in delhi in uh, you know in um, uh, airport express metro i've seen that aed machine the only place in India I saw that, right? If you go abroad, it's very common everywhere. Universities, schools, you know, even the, the streets have this AED machines, right? So, well, how do you place it? So, basically, if you open this AED machine, you will see two pad. So, basically, the machine, the AED is to, uh, you know, to, to, uh, yeah, to help us in certain types of heart attacks. Well, in most of the heart attack, it works, okay? So, you can save lives by AED. So, it has got a two pad, right? So, you open the machine and put the two pad and switch it on. That's it. People can uh, recover, especially with arrhythmia-related heart attacks, right? A, a major chunk of heart attack is due to arrhythmia, the, the rhythm issues, right? So, the both two pads you're putting in the front of the chest and turn, in, turn it on, the AED machine. New papers said that instead of doing that, why don't you place one pad just backside, you know, of the heart, front and back of the heart. And just this change in placement resulted in 256 percentage better, right, uh, protection from the heart attacks than both on the same side. That is pretty exciting story. Uh, the paper published in JAMA, right, uh, Journal of uh, American Medical Association. Check out the show notes for original papers, okay. Next is thousands of toxic chemicals, including PFAS, that is, uh, uh, you know, um, basically, uh, what is that, uh, perfluoroalkaloic, uh, alkaline, right, substances, isn't it? And, um, yeah, forever chemical, it's also known as forever chemical, right? It, it, uh, it's very difficult to get rid of these chemicals. So, thousands of these chemicals have been found in uh, human blood, hair, and breast milk, you know? So, circulating, yeah, in, in, in this one, that's pretty, uh, uh, you know, uh, a scary scenario, isn't it? And most of these are traced into the food packaging materials. So, food packaging material chemicals are getting into the human system. So, the new paper came in nature, okay, so you can check it out. And also, regular blood donation can decrease circulating PFAS, another very interesting paper which I read. So, if you... Uh, donate plasma much better and a uh, little bit less if you donate blood right so that the pfas can be reduced pretty interesting isn't it that's because the body produce or makes new blood right so that pfas is less in it yeah next story personal carbon footprint inequality equality that means the rich versus poor how much is a carbon footprint so that equality inequality is grossly underestimated, especially the the richest, the top one percentage richest. How much do they uh, pollute? You know, how much do they emit? So basically, the carbon footprint of the richest. Poor people think that well, they also pollute quite similar to us, but that's not the case. So the paper got published in Nature, Climate Change. Okay, so here they did the study here in India as well, right? Top one percentage on average, the carbon footprint is. 33 tons of co2 per year while the public gas is just two tons you know like one turn for the the normal public and two turn for the rich the double it's not really double it's almost 33 times oh by the way if you take one intercontinental flight for example delhi all the way to rio right rio de janeiro uh, and back right one return flight do you know how much is the carbon footprint approximately 7.8 tons of co2 per capita carbon footprint 
So you are polluting almost seven times the annual carbon footprint per capita footprint of an average Indian. That that is a, yeah that is a revealing story, isn't it? Yeah. Next is about a neural basis of religious fundamentalism. So the new paper got published in PNAS, right? Check out the, the papers in the show notes as usual. And uh, what they found is that the people with extreme religiosity and extreme religious fundamentalism have cognitive, uh, you know, the, uh, have, uh, you know, uh, basically what they were looking is the functional MRI of it. And extreme religiosity, they have a neural network in the right hemisphere of the brain, right? Damage. So, damaged neural network on the right side of the brain is correlated with extreme religious fundamentalism. By the way, correlation does not mean causation. Beware of it, okay? So, that is that's a paper. It's pretty interesting. Next one. People with less diverse gut microbiome associated with dementia and other cognitive impairment. So, if your gut microbiome has not much of the species diversity, right? So, it is uh, very less species are there in the gut microbiome. Then chances are high that uh, you know, you are more prone to develop the dementia and other cognitive impairment like Alzheimer's disease later on. So, a rich uh, micro, uh, you know, microbiota or gut microbiota is essential. So, when I was reading this, I was thinking about portfolio effect in ecology. So, those ecosystem or habitat with more species diversity tend to be resilient. So, in case of uh, calamities like forest fire, so, those habitats with more species, you know, rich in species diversity, tend to recover or rebound faster. So, resilience is faster. So, same portfolio effect explains this phenomenon too, you know. So, by the way, how to ensure that you your microbiota is better, you know, gut microbiome uh, is more species rich. Feed the bacteria. You can feed them by increasing the fiber in your diet and also supplements like you know, yogurt or whatever the fermented and also inulin, right? So, all those fiber really help, yeah. Another related paper is that people, those people consuming six times more berries, tea and red wines. So, berry, tea and red wine all have flavonoids, okay? So, six times more flavonoid consumption is associated with 28% less incidence of dementia, yeah? cognitive decline. So, you can uh, reduce the likelihood of developing this dementia by increasing flavonoid rich food. Pretty interesting, right? Next story. Medicinal tree, the, the tree is called balm of uh, Gilead or Gilead. Right? Two way of saying, right? It's, it's uh, also a name of a very famous pharmaceutical company, right? Gilead uh, uh, Pharma, right? Biosciences, I guess. So, balm of Gilead is a tree mentioned in Bible. So, and also Jew, right? Uh, it, it's part of the Jewish, right? Uh, yeah, the worship, right? So, yeah. So, this medicinal tree successfully grown from 1,000 years old seed found in Judean cave. So, if you turn back in time, 1,000 years old map of Israel and Palestine, you can see that there's no Palestine. It's all Israel, right? It's all Judean. Uh, place right so later than Jews immigrated and then they came back in 1947 isn't it so yeah it, don't be convenient on checking which how long you go back in the map right so if you go thousand years back it's all Jews settlement right in, in the today's Israel so during those time yeah that if you uh, yeah this the authors that they, they uh, took the seed from a cave then they just tried to replant and it grows that's amazing isn't it that's that's an medicinal plan which they claim but i don't know how what what exactly is this medicine in it but yeah that is that paper got published in nature right check out the paper next story is about feedback the employee feedbacks most feedbacks are biased towards men that means women preferentially get better feedback than men how come so the reason is that the feedback providers don't want to be perceived as gender biased you know they want to be politically correct so that's why they have this uh, you know subconscious bias to grade females with higher 
uh, rank than the males. You know, the, the feedback tend to be better for females than the male. I never ever imagined this is a scenario. So yeah, of course the feedbacks are, uh, yeah, a lot of factors contributing into the biasness of the feedback, but this is, yeah, the gender angle is another very interesting. The paper got published in Journal of Business and Psychology, okay? Next story is uh, pretty interesting right from here in India. The collapse of vulture population has led to 1 lakh death per year in India. Every year, 1 lakh death just because of the vulture population declined. And why the vultures are declining? It's a very well-known story, right? Uh, uh, we have covered that in one of the earlier episodes of Curiosity. It's because of the diclofenac, the painkiller used in cattle, right? The dairy industry uh, use a lot of diclofenac. And the, when the cattle die, the carcass of the cattle get eaten by vultures. And as you know, this diclofenac has effect on the kidney. So the kidneys of the vulture get damaged and they, they die. You know, so now vulture die, death, how come it's affecting or in, inducing the human death? You know, one lakh death per year. How is it possible? The new paper came, uh, you know, last month is by a, a person called E.G. Frank from University of Chicago. Pretty interesting paper. And uh, the paper argues that because the vulture is gone, the carcass is left to decay. And that causes several pathogenic infections. And that infection, the model of that uh, this author, they did an extensive modeling. And then the result is one lakh death can be attributed to the vulture population decline. Pretty interesting, isn't it? And another, uh, quite similar to that. Well, there is another link in the show notes, uh, a podcast on exactly this topic on uh, featured by Radio Lab. Okay, Radio Lab is one of my favorite podcasts. Please check out. That is also the... I strongly suggest you please check it out that podcast of the radio lab now another pretty interesting paper by the same author right eg frank yes yeah, so i'm a big fan of eg frank now the papers coming from his lab in university of chicago are highly curiosity driven this paper argues that the decline in bat population in the united states has caused more human infant death you know so that is pretty interesting. A lot of human infant death can be attributed to decline in the bat populations in the United States. How is it possible? Because a bat is a keystone uh, species in the forest and also the bats eat a lot of insects as well as especially with the, uh, you know, the mosquitoes, right? When bats, with the bats gone, this insect's population increases, then um, uh, you know, mosquito-related malaria cases also increases. That causes directly the, the human death. But more than that, as insects are high, we, we are forced to use a lot of pesticides and insecticides in our agricultural system. And that induces further human mortality, you know, infant mortality. Pretty exciting paper. Please check out the paper in the show notes. Right. Next story is about the brain. Right, the age in the in the brain. So brain aged more slowly in monkeys, which are under the popular anti-diabetic medicine, metformin. So by the way, metformin is a plant-derived anti-diabetic medicine, and uh, yeah, the plant is uh, French lilac. You know, so not many people knew that metformin is plant-derived. Yeah, it's a plant-derived uh, anti-diabetic drug. So if you feed this drug to the monkey. By the way, this drug is also, uh, you know, associated with longevity even in the human beings. You know, the people who take this metformin tend to live longer. Pretty exciting, isn't it? So, yeah, this study was in monkey and the age of the brain is much more slower, substantially slower in those monkeys who took metformin. Very interesting, isn't it? That paper got published in Nature. Check it out. Uh, related story, severe COVID caused well, those people who had severe COVID, severe COVID means those patients with the COVID had to get admitted and also had to supplement the oxygen, you know. So those kind of people, severe COVID people had brain damage and the kind of brain damage caused by the COVID, severe COVID is quite similar to two decades of aging. Can you believe it? Two decades of aging. That got, that paper got published in Nature Medicine and Another related paper is a COVID lockdown. 
of course had effect on all of us right the lockdown almost for two years this lockdown aged girls almost three years more than boys so disproportionately more girls are aged because of covid lockdown lot of factors can be attributed check out that paper right you can check out all this uh, the, the links are in the the show notes and the paper got published in pnas <laughs> proceedings of national academy of sciences usa and final paper quite related to all these of uh, three topics which i discussed pregnancy shrinks the gray matter levels by four percentage that's an alarming story for the mothers right mothers brain gray matter shrinks four percentage a uh, postpartum you know so postpartum depression is also very known very well known right many people after giving birth they they suffer depression so maybe this is related with the shrinkage in the the gray matter we have to wait and watch you know exciting isn't it yeah uh, do subscribe to the uh, our facebook group as well as our google uh, you know google groups the the email mailing list to keep abreast with the latest papers published you know, as and when our volunteers are being shared in the group okay please check it out coming next part of the curiosity is observances of science related and space related observances right the third of october is annular solar eclipse yes yeah, so this month october we can see a solar eclipse annular right not the total but it's annular the ring around the sun you can see it right well it's visible only in some parts of the south america especially if you are from peru and chile those areas right and also parts of antarctic uh, peninsula not even the mainland antarctic but only uh, yeah the uh, finger like projection projecting towards south america right that is called antarctic peninsula yeah you can you can see from there too october 4th to 10th is world space week 5th of october is world teachers day while in september we celebrated the national teachers day here in india but world teachers day is on 5th of october 6th is moon venus conjunction 7th is habitat day 8th is the meteor shower called draconic annual draconic meteor shower 10th is mental health day and also a meteor shower called southern taurid meteor shower so many meteor showers especially if you are from high altitude regions and those regions with less air pollution you're lucky you can watch all these meteor showers celestial shows right free shows 12th is world migratory birds day and also you can watch comet right comet c 2023 a3 if you have a binocular you can watch and if you sh should be incredibly lucky to spot this comet okay so that happens on 12th right 13th of october is disaster risk reduction day while 14th is you can see a conjunction moon saturn conjunction 15th is world day for rural women and 16th is food safety day right and food security day 17th is eradication of poverty and also on 17 you can see the the final super moon of this year 2024 will have half only two super moon you know last september's super moon we already discussed right that was the only super moon happened till date and yes october's full moon is also a super moon the so-called hunter's moon right that is the last super moon of 2024 let's let's definitely let's not don't miss that event okay celestial event that's going to happen on 17th right in here in india on 17th of october 18th is epsilon geminid meteor shower another famous meteor shower while 21st is uh, one of the most enigmatic meteor showers of entire 2024 is called orionid meteor shower uh, that is going to happen on 21st of october and also on the same day moon jupiter conjunction and 24th is un day united nations day and also moon mars conjunction and also leonis minorid meteor shower final meteor shower of october is going to be on 24th so this month you can see a lot of meteor shower and also one full moon uh, which is uh, you know which uh, yeah happened to be a, a a super moon you know and also annular solar eclipse if you're incredibly lucky you can spot it right if you're from south america yeah 
coming to the last section of curiosity is opportunities for the young researchers and students if you are a student of masters or mbbs right or mtech or uh, you know you can apply for a very prestigious commonwealth scholarship of the uk the call is open now and the call will close for 15th of october this call is for 2025 admissions in the uk universities okay corona program for final year pre-final year pre-final year master student and also for bachelors right so this is a very prestigious program named after nobel laureate from here in punjab you know or gobind singh Khurana, right so it is for uh, exchange program it's not even exchange it let you go to the united states prestigious universities there and work there or do an internship you know from six till ten months long right six to ten month long internship you can do in United States universities, prestigious scholarship called Kurana program, right? Uh, yeah, October 7th is the deadline. DAD doctoral program is also open now. It is, a, it's not a, a twining program. Usually DAD programs are exchange program, but not this. This is for uh, uh, doing the PhDs in institutes, not in the universities, but institutes in the Germany. For example, Leibniz Institute, Humboldt Institutes, or max Planck institute so those institutes you can do the phd with the dad scholarship scheme okay so that is the uh, the deadline is 21st october and uh, call for nominations for agarwal prize for young scholars in ecological economics is still open the deadline is 15th of december and there are so many other opportunities you can check out our facebook groups as and when the new opportunities uh, you know uh, race our volunteers do share and in case you have certain opportunities in your mind for example your lab you're looking for a phd student you have some scholarship to offer so you're welcome to ping that in our group okay and that's it for this episode of the curiosity i wish you all the very best in the throughout the month of october right yeah so i will see you again in yet another episode in the month of november and till then Please take care of yourself and if you can someone else too. Goodbye.